What's up, nerds? nerds? What's up, nerds? God's Master here with another Magic the Gathering puzzle quest. Today's quest, Urza, Lord Protector Bundle. Is it worth the IRL cash of $29.99 American USD dollars? Uh, is it worth gold? Should you pick him up? I'm gonna be spotlighting a couple of builds for him today, as well as answering your biggest questions like, is he worth it? But before we do, as always, gratitude, appreciation, and thanks to the team over at Octagon. Again, thank you guys, as always, I appreciate you for getting me early access to this walker. Very excited to play with him and get going on it, and you guys rock. Merry New Year! Hope you guys had a fantastic holiday season. I know I've been quiet, but it's because I've been relaxing and um, working my tail off at all at the same time. So what do you get with the Urza Lord Protector Bundle? Let's jump right into it. All right, so you're going to get 50 gold. You're going to get 25,000 runes, 120 pinks, a regular booster pack, a white booster pack, a blue booster pack, right? Yes, sir. You're going to get Urza himself, and then if you have VIP, you get an extra 40 crystals, jewels, I should say, for 29 99 American USD dollars, but let's take a look at the Planeswalker because he's an interesting one. My channel's turned into nothing but reviews of Planeswalkers. I haven't given you guys any good gameplay and anything other than what I'm doing in these builds. So that's why I actually am kind of concentrating on deck builds. So you guys have some kind of synergy of what I'm playing right now. So with that said, when you get to here, it's a very important thing you know that Urza is all the way at the bottom, man, of your collection. Let's go over my overview with him. He is blue-white. He's a flipper. He's got a static ability in addition to that, though. So he's one of the rare dual-color walkers that has a static ability. Uh, you have two sides. There's Urza, Lord Protector, and both have 119 life. And on his first side, his front side, you only get two abilities, which is pretty interesting. So he has eight loyalty for... Power redirection, artifact and spell cards in your hand gain five mana. Pretty solid, that's all of them. If you have a card named the Might Stone and Weak Stone in hand, it gains full mana. So if you're playing it in deck, you actually wind up getting that card with full mana for eight loyalty, pretty solid. 11 loyalty for calculating assessment. Discard a card, then draw two cards. The last card in your hand gains six mana. If you have a card named Urza Lord Protector in hand, then that card gains full mana. So for what is this, 19 loyalty, essentially? You wind up putting yourself in a position where you can get both those cards for free, putting them on the board. Pretty fair deal. In addition to that, Impending Ignition, when you activate a loyalty ability for the first time during your turn, if you're playing with Urza, Lord Protector, that's this guy, plus if you control a card named Urza, Lord Protector, and the card named the Might Stone and Weak Stone, tag, <laughs> tag team, back again, check this, correct this, let's begin with Urza, Planeswalker. Otherwise, draft a card from Urza's Spellbook. So before we get into the second part of what this does, essentially, you tag team it. You have both those cards on the board. You get them. Now, you have a draft ability. Draft a card from Urza's Spellbook. You do not have to play those two cards in your build. You get those cards when you're drafting. Essentially, just use your Planeswalker ability, any one of them. You draft that card into hand. Second part, let's say you're flipped to the backside of Urza. Mm, check out Urza's backside. If you're playing with Urza, Planeswalker, gain an extra swap. You may activate a loyalty ability again this turn. Shenanigans. I like that a lot. All right, let's check out Urza's backside. All right, so Urza, Planeswalker, same amount of life. Three more abilities. So this guy's got a total of five loyalty abilities. Eight loyalty, create three artifact soldier tokens. You gain two life for each artifact you control, including their reinforcements and each spell card in your graveyard. That's a lot. I wish we had something in standard right now that would do damage based on you gaining life, like a one shot, like just load up the board and just do tons of shenanigans. I would have a lot of fun with that. 14 loyalty for essence disassembly. Exile an opposing card with the greatest mana cost. Non-targeted removal. Very powerful, a little expensive at 14 loyalty, but if we have some loyalty ramp, i.e. if we're using a Faithbound Judge, which is for all white auto-include decks for mythic builds, if you don't have him, go hunt him down. He's absolutely one of the most powerful creatures in standard. What are your top five creatures in standard right now? And then 20 loyalty for ultimate blast. I'm gonna give her the ultimate blast. Destroy all opposing cards, destroy all non-vanguard and non-artifact cards you control, that's the first artifact card with the greatest mana cost from your library. It gains full mana. Ah, V. We're going to run some artifacts here and show how that goes. Mana bonuses. Plus five to blue and white. Love it. Uh, negligible to green and black. And minus two to red. Totally okay with that. Good mana bonuses. My initial thoughts are, I like everything I've seen so far. I haven't played my matches yet. I'm pre-recording this. So you and I are going to see the journey I take in my evaluation with Urza. I'm trying to get to a thousand subs, bro. Come on, help a bro out. 
thrust a bro. Let's get to a thousand subs. Let's celebrate ads together because even earning an, an extra nickel a week would help fund a starving content creator like myself. Let's get into our first build. Let's look at our popper build. All right, popper build time. Okay, so Suchi Cave Guard, 23 mana, uh, Vigilance, Ward, 8-8, eight, eight, Artifact Construct. It's all artifacts, baby. Ward drain 12 mana from your hand. When this creature dies or loses a reinforcement during your turn, gain 23 mana. My man Main Loop, one of my favorite content creators in the space right now. He actually is outproducing every other content creator combined in content. Great videos. You should check him out. I have a link in the description below to one of his videos. He actually did a full build on Suchi. This is not an optimal build for Suchi. It's just something that spotlights it because it's an artifact construct and I'm having fun with it. So I'm going to use Majestic Metamorphosis. Seven mana. Target creature's base power becomes toughness. Four, four. Flying becomes artifact creature. You'll find out why here in a minute. Brawler's Plate. If I'm going to have the biggest basty, beastie boy on the board, I want to give him plus two, plus two, and Berserk. Plus, it's an artifact equipment, and that works well with Brass Knuckles. For seven mana, it's an equipment, artifact equipment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, if you possess another equipment support, i.e. Brawler's Plate, it gets double strike to your big creature. Vivisection, 16 mana spell, target creature control loses a reinforcement. If you can't destroy that creature instead, then draw three cards. Those cards gain three mana. You know we got cut your losses to kill our boy. And to bring him back, we use Invoke Justice, Mass Production, because we like lots of weenies on the board for more artifact soldiers, Invoke the Winds. We like taking their stuff, destroying their stuff, and getting the benefits of their stuff. And Radiant Grace, it's kind of a flex card while on the board. Your first creature gains plus one and oh in Vigilance. When your first creature dies, transform this card. When your opponent takes uh, casts a creature, disable it until the beginning of your next turn. Just keeps the hasties off you, just in case. We're going to be going up against the Fallen Adams build, piloted by the AI, Greg Garouk. Let's get to it. All right, so interesting little side note. I was playtesting this build, and I was putting it together, and I got to be honest, man. Getting his stuff to trigger is really kind of tricky at the popper levels. All right, let's go ahead and use our first. Give everything plus five. We're going to grab Lord Urza first. Yeah, we're going to grab Lord Urza because we have the room in hand. So we're drawing the two cards. I uh, did not draw the two cards. Why did it not draw the two cards? Discard a card, then draw a card. Last card in your hand gains six. It didn't do any of that. Why didn't it do any of that? It hasn't glitched this entire time. And just because I'm recording this video, it decided to glitch out on me. Not cool, bro. All right, we'll go here. Boom, just get our body on the board. Give us a nice little breaker. Uh, we got Berserk and a 10-10. So that way we can actually encourage it. He's destroying our creature. All right, well, with that said, let's go ahead and get this out. Let's get Invoke the Winds out. I like nice free stuff. Let's get you back, Suchi. All right, we have Berserker again. Let's try that again. Take two. All right. Now you'll note that I don't really waste a lot of mana trying to get Urza Lord Protector out and mana it up because I really want to focus on getting the rest of the stuff. Go here. Maybe we get a drop. There it is. Nice, nice. Bang, bang. Have the ward and been exiled. What is this? Oh, Kami War. Gosh, I hate Kami War. Uh, let's invoke the... Yeah, let's invoke the winds. Metamor uh, majestic Metamorphosis, because we don't really need it. We're going to do calculating. We're going to ditch a card. Boom, boom. We're getting that. We're actually going to grab the Power Stone. Now, and that's the trick. Whatever card you take... It should be the opposite of what ability you're using uh, the second time. The first time, it doesn't matter. Pick whatever you want. But the second time, whatever card you have in hand, you should be using the alternate ability of your loyalty so you can get that card for free. So as you can see, I got Urza Lord Protector on the freebie, and I am not going to cast it. I'm going to hold it in hand, and the reason for that is because I don't want them at risk or exposed on the board until I'm ready to use my... Loyalty ability again. No, we are going to cast them now because next turn we want to be able to flip our walker. Here. Boom. Boom. Nice. We get a double. Okay, so we get a double swap. Nice. Now we're going to demonstrate something here, or at least we're going to try to. I haven't been able to do this yet, so I'm going to check on something before we do. Let's get everything loaded here on the board. We're going to give that guy minus five, minus five. Nice. We're going to get everything. Oh, let's give him another minus five, minus five. We'll take two. That's, that's fine. Draw the cards. Do the thing. Power Stone Weak Stone is not too shabby. I, I, I gotta admit, it's actually cooler than I thought it would be. Do not destroy your Urza yet. Do not destroy your Urza yet. Actually, I know what we do. 
We go here. We invoke the winds. That's what we do, baby. Let's invoke the winds. We take you. Boom. We sack you. Snag and sack, baby. All right. We draw all the stuff. We get a little bit of mana. Our guy gets the double strikes because we have both of the things on board. Let's see what the... Uh, it's okay. I'm going to invoke the winds and I'm going to bring back my Urza. Actually, we can just do the first ability. We don't have to use the second one because we're not trying to draw cards. Let's ditch this. And frankly, we don't need two of these. Let's ditch the one without mana. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's grab another Urza. Okay, we're going to go here. We got the Urzi. We got the Artifact Soldiers. And they just got to stay on the board long enough for me to do the next thing. Okay, so now we have Might Stone and Weak Stone on board. We have Urza, Lord Protector. We have them both. We also have 15 loyalty, as you can see. So I'm going to use my first ability to give myself as much loyalty as we possibly can. Boom. Leftover in hand. And so we have, what? Seven left, right? Now, the, the reason I'm saying this is because of this. If you're playing the Urza Planeswalker, gain an extra swap. You may activate a loyalty ability again this turn. So I should have an extra swap. And I get to activate another loyalty ability. Is that every turn or is that just on the flip? Let's go here. Boom. Okay, I get my big boy out. Uh, I'm going to give this 4-4. Four, four. So it's a 16-16 now. Big boy. Draw the card. Get the mana. I'm up to my secondary loyalty ability. I'm going to... Ooh. I'm not going to do that. I should get an extra swap. I don't. They didn't give me an extra swap. Is that on the next time I do this? Let's see if I can trigger my, my loyalty ability again here. So we're going to go... Let's try Artifact Soldier. All right? All right. So I've gained an extra swap. That's what it is. And I gained 42 life. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the sweetest things about this is the gaining of that 42 life. So I got an extra swap. Let's go here. All right, so I can do it again. I should be able to use my loyalty ability. And I did. Do I get an extra loyalty swap? That's another 48 life I gained. Do I get an X? It didn't say get an extra swap this time. Let's do this. Boom. Ah, I didn't get into a loyalty ability. Ooh, you get to do a lot of stuff with that. I like that. I like that a lot. Damn you, Garuk. <laughs> okay. Okay, 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 okay. So I'm starting to I'm starting to see. I hate Kami War. I hate it. It's such a good card against you. I, I don't like playing it because it's so slow, but it's such a pain when you get faced against it. It's so brutal. Garuk is such a strong dual color walker. Set my second favorite green black walker. <laughs> Uh, my first being uh, Nissa of Shadowed Bows. I love Reanimator stuff. It's so much fun. All right. That uh, should be game. Double strike. Bang, bang. 21, bang. There you go. That was long. I probably edited this down. I apologize for it being so brutal. We were just trying to run all the different things we possibly could. That life gain on the second side is insane. You gain so much life. Oh, if there were only something in standard right now that every point of life you gained, you did damage to your opponent. That would be great. So great. Do we have anything like that? You guys let me know in the comments below if that's the case. All right. That's our popper build. Really poor example, but it was fun. Let me show you the mythic build now. Dude, this is stupid. All right. Here's my mythic build. Let me go through this real quickly. Blade Quill Serpent. Absolutely chase card. You got to have it. Portal to Phyrexia is an insane card. You got to get it. Pyromancer's Goggles. Remember what that does. Cut your losses for the blue conversion. Broker's Charm. Faithbound Judge for all the conversion. Time Reversal. I'm going to show you Shenanigans. Academy Elite. That is, uh, you can cut it. It's a cuttable card. Brilliant Restoration is very powerful in this build. And then Meeting of the Five to fetch it and make it go. Let's go show you some of the shenanigans. All right. So first things first, we're just going to ditch everything literally and just go for blade coil so this is the the challenge with blade coil is that you get it to cast for blue you're gonna get all these cards they're only gonna get a few blue because of what's on the board four but it's okay it's a start it's free mana we take it we always take it empty your hand cast your blood coil all right so we're going to time reversal here we do not need to use just blue we want as many blue gems on the board as we can possibly get so we try to match white there all right Come on, man. We will also get our ramp up in our next ability. Plus, we should be able to make a white match here. Oh, my goodness. Look, I didn't even see the dragon there. I'm in Nodes of Power, so it's us against a legacy deck. 
but it doesn't matter. We're still going to win. Kill your blade coil. Do not hesitate to blade coil murder because he's an artifact. You didn't think about that, did you? You didn't think about that, did you? Let me show you what happens when you do this properly. Go ahead and use our portal Phyrexia. And we're going to go ahead and bring out our blade coil. It's going to get a creature on the board that we can shack with whatchamacallit. Uh, we want to use our first. Come on. Why can't I use my first? Artifact spell cards in your hand. Gain five mana if you have a card named the... Yeah, this, so this isn't working. I'm actually pushing the Power Stone, the first one. So you have to have an artifact in hand to make that first ability work. That's a little lame, man. I didn't note that the first time I was playing this. This is actually a reshoot. Uh, let's see what I want to do here. Um, because the video didn't come out. The audio did, but not the video. And that stinks because that happens from time to time. So I got to reshoot stuff. All right, so we're going to do it again. Take our own business. Watch this. Watch this business. Boom. We need to get our... Now can we do it? There, it worked that time. That's really weird. Actually, yeah, we'll do Might Stone. We'll grab the Might Stone. I might. We're going to keep this down here because we want to put that in the yard. I guess we'll take red. It's not really optimal. All right. Going to gain some life. Let's see. We don't have anything else in our yard. Let's do this. Let's take... Oh, what do we want? <laughs> Let's take Emrakul because that's just fun. We're going to replace our Faithbound because we want to get a might, white match. Uh, we'll just go here for the blues. Oh, we got the white match, but I didn't match it. It's just a landfall. It doesn't count. It doesn't count if you don't match it yourself. That's one thing that stinks about that. You can't you can't cascade into it. You have to actually match it. Uh, Blade Coil hits. Uh, apparently, we use black, and Blade Coil just ditched their hand because we don't want them to have any cards. They don't need any cards. They don't need any cards. Uh, let's go ahead and bring something back here. Uh, no, we do not want to do that because we want to get him out of the yard. I need to make a white match. There it is. All right, let's do that. Boom. So we can get into our final ability. I could have done it right now, but I just didn't. I'm going to go ahead and shoot that with Might Stone and White Weak Stone. Wink. I'm going to get some more mana conversion just because. All right. I will replace this one. It's because he's not really in our wheelhouse of creatures. And I like having the wall of death that is Faithbound. And he keeps the things humming. Because I can shoot him. Boom. Right? Which is good. But I can also shoot Faithbound. Which is another way to do it. All right, there comes that guy, and that's game. That's essentially how that game attack wins. Let me show you his actual ultimate. How about that? So a couple of quick notes here. Number one, if you have Faithbound Judge in your final position and you activate your secondary ability, puts that Judge right in the yard for you. Allows you to make that wipe swap, so you can go ahead and get your token on the board, and you can maximize your loyalty up here. Let's go. Okay, so I have purposefully been trying not to cast... My ultimate abilities are actually to win the games with the deck build that I built here, but also ramping into my third on the second time on the second side. That has been very challenging to do. I'm either destroying everything with the cards that have built the deck, or I'm just taking so much punishment and trying to get my two uh, Power Stone and Urza on the board at the same time with so much removal on their side that it makes it almost impossible to do without a lot of luck. So in this case, here we are. Let me demonstrate the third ability. Boom, boom. And yeah, you destroy your own stuff. <laughs> Everything but artifacts. Just want to demonstrate that's what it does. It's very difficult to get to. Let's get to the recap. All right, final thoughts on Urza Lord Protector and Planeswalker. I really like him, man, but let's go line by line. 119 life points, I think that's fantastic. I think that's really good. Uh, his, uh, his mana gains are good. They're plus five, plus five to his main colors, minus two to red. Didn't even notice it. A couple of times I was in sticky situations, needed at least three mana uh, to beat something in and uh, wound up getting it out. I will say that you need some type of conversion. Cut your losses as long as that's in standard. Urza is in play because of the conversion you can get to help ramp into his abilities. Plus, if you have Faithbound Judge, 100% throw that into your deck and make sure that it's in your uh, graveyard so you can exile him. And his first abil or second ability plays into getting FBJ into your yard so you can make your white match and just have all the loyalty you could possibly need. He's a perfect fit for that. I will say that he is absolutely card dependent. You got to have great artifacts. He's an artifact builder. And fortunately for him, he comes at a time where there are some great artifacts available for you to play with. I love it. Let's actually break down his abilities. Power redirection is crazy good. If you're running a low to the ground spell and artifact build, he rewards you for spells and cards. And I love that it's not just artifacts, it's artifacts and spell cards. That's brilliant. 
and you wind up getting those two cards, and those are always going to be in standard for him, Mightstone and Weakstone and Urza Lord Protector going forward to help you flip. They thought of that even after this meta shifts and we aren't as artifact heavy. The good thing is there's always artifacts uh, in, in just origins, you know, like Pyromancer's Goggles and things like that that are worth including into discount artifact builds. So because of that, that's great. But to know that you're going to have Mightstone and Weakstone, which is actually better than I expected it to be. The minus five, minus five gives play, man. And if you can get a couple of them out, if you're running them, it makes a big difference. And being able to get both the Mightstone and Protector from his draft is super cool. And just like uh, Kazmina, it's never going to go out of standard for him specifically. He'll always have access to those cards forever going forward. Pretty awesome. That said, I will say that there were a couple of games that I wound up playing trying to demonstrate his ultimate ability on the other side that it was really difficult if you're going up against a deck that has a ton of removal to get out the Weakstone and Urza at the same time and then the next turn trigger your loyalty ability to get it done. So I would highly encourage you don't get them on the board until you have an alternate swap. You then get them on the board, you take a secondary swap, but you already can get them out and then use your ultimate to flip over to the other side. After that's out, once you flip, you don't need to do anything else. You're never gonna go back to the other side. You're gonna stay on this side. And calculating assessment, discard a card, draw two cards, brilliant. The last card in your hand gains six mana if you have it gains full mana. Uh, 11 loyalty for that is not bad, especially if you have FBJ in your exile doing the token on the board and getting you all the loyalty. You're going to ramp past that really, really quickly. On the front side, these are pretty functional. Now, onto the flip side, onto the Planeswalker. Let's check out Urza's backside, shall we? Oh my god. Artificer's Transcendence create three artifact soldier tokens. You gain two life for each artifact you control, including the reinforcements and each spell card in your graveyard. That is insane. So it, in, it rewards you for having a spell build. So even if you don't concentrate on an artifact build, you can still you can still do the thing with artif with spells with this build. I, I dig it. Essence disassembly. I never I never showed you that because exile an opposing card with the greatest mana cost. Why do that for six more loyalty? You can actually destroy all opposing cards, destroying all non vanguard and non artifact cards you control. Fetch first artifact card with the greatest mana cost from your library, it gains full mana. You know, for that extra six loyalty, it's worth it. And especially if you're running all artifacts, that becomes a factor. Now, in the future, when you're not running artifacts as the mainstay of what you're doing, could be problematic. But we'll see. If you wind up actually running something that is all spells, I'd love to see a build if you wind up doing that. And finally, his passive ability. Uh, really, it's just a functioning way to get you from front side to Urza's back side. Let's check out his back side. And in addition to that, that ability to take an extra swap, man, chef's kiss. That's like Master of Time by using his ability. It's super sweet. And if you actually run some other cards, actually, you don't even need to really run other cards that give you extra swaps. When I was running the Temporal Mastery or whatever it was, um, that was just overkill. I didn't really need to have it, but it was a lot of fun to have all the extra swaps along with it. Is Urza Planeswalker really worth the IRL cash? I actually, I say he is. He was a blast to play with. Uh, I really ran into very few snags with him. There are so many great cards available for blue and white right now. The meta is just really strong from him in, in standard. And forget Legacy. If you go into Legacy and you're running Omni with this guy, I mean, it's over. Game over. You don't need to really do much else. He's just going to be a boss taking those extra turns and ramping you into where you need to go to. The only challenge I had with him is what I already mentioned. His front side, uh, having both of those cards in play at the same time, and then triggering your loyalty ability can be tricky. But frankly, for all the other benefit you wind up getting, and on the third, a second side, his first ability just gaining that life like crazy, I was gaining 40, 60 life at a time per turn just by using that and having FBJ giving me the token and giving me all that loyalty. I just came from behind so well with Urza's backside. That said, yeah, I absolutely recommend him. Where does he rank on my tier list? For dual color walkers, he's absolutely an A tier walker. Absolutely an A tier walker for my play style. I really enjoy him. And I argue if there's something that we can use to synergize his life gain that does damage to your opponent at the same time, bro, he'd be an S tier walker. He would be. I really like this walker. I think Octagon really got it right with this one. And I hope that you enjoy it too. So whether you pick him up for cash or you're picking him up for gold in the future, hello future you. Awesome, congrats. These are just a couple of suboptimal builds that I've put together for Urza. I will be playing with Urza more often. 
and I will be posting those inside of my Discord. So with that said, my friend, what do you think about Urza Planeswalker? Are you picking them up for IRL cash? Are you going to pick them up for gold? What is your story? And if you already have them and you have some builds you think are fantastic, I'd love to hear about it. As always, my friends, I appreciate you. You could be anywhere in the world and choose to spend this time with me here. I know I don't post as often as I should because it's so darn busy, but it would really help the channel if you subscribed. I could get to a thousand subs, monetize the channel, and make millions of dollars off of you watching my video. Well, maybe millions of micro cents. I don't know. That said, click the link below, get to the Discord, join, see the other builds we go in there, ask questions in hobnob with some of the greatest gamers in the world specifically in this game and others but bottom line is always like subscribe comment and until our next quest my friend i appreciate you bro you're awesome Sorry, bro.